Bonjour. Today we're learning about reflexive verbs. This is something that you'll need to take a lot of notes on and that we'll definitely need to clear up in class, but just do your best now because there's not a direct translation into English, so we're just going to do our best to work with what we have. So let's start off with figuring out what is a reflexive verb. A reflexive verb describes what someone does to or for him or herself. So the person acting in the sentence, the subject, is the same thing as the object of the sentence, the thing receiving the action. It's called a reflexive verb because it reflects the action of the verb back onto the subject. So it's like what I was saying. The subject is the same as the object in that sentence. We don't use it a lot in English, or at least not very obviously, but a few examples in English that would have these reflexive verbs are she wakes herself up. We could just say she wakes up, but the idea is that you wake yourself up. So here, she is the subject of the sentence, that's the one who's doing the waking, that's the verb. But then herself is also the object. So because she is the subject and the object, this is a reflexive verb. We also see this in the example, he brushes his teeth. So he's the one doing the brushing, but he's also the one who receives this action of the brushing. Which sounds really weird, but once we get to think of it in that term, it'll help make a little bit more sense. Also, they put themselves to sleep. They, that's our subject, they're the ones doing the action. Putting to sleep is the action. And what are they putting to sleep? They're putting themselves to sleep. So they is the subject, but they is also the object. Even though it's not the same word, it's the same group of people doing the action and receiving the action. So how do we use these in French? Every reflexive verb has something called a reflexive pronoun. This is the key word that's going to signal that it is a reflexive verb. So this is what will show you that the action is being done to that subject and helps clarify that role in the sentence. There's a different reflexive pronoun for each of the six subjects. So depending on the subject of the sentence, you'll use a different reflexive pronoun. So if your subject of the sentence is je, the reflexive pronoun is me, pronounced me even though it looks like me. If you're using to, the reflexive pronoun is te. If you're using il or elle or on, the reflexive pronoun is se. If you're using nous, the reflexive pronoun is nous, which can be a little bit confusing, so you will see the word nous twice in one sentence. Same with vous, the reflexive pronoun is vous. And then il au plural, the reflexive pronoun is se. So if you're doing third person singular or third person plural, so il l or il l, it's the same reflexive pronoun, se. So really you only have a couple of reflexive pronouns to memorize. So what do we do with these? If you need to conjugate a reflexive verb, and we'll go over some examples in just a minute, there are three main things that you have to do. First, you choose the reflexive pronoun that matches the subject of the sentence. So you look and see, is the subject using je? Is it using nu? Is it using vous? Is it using tu? And then you choose the right reflexive pronoun based on that. Then the rest of the verb, you conjugate like you would any other verb. So if you, if you have a reflexive verb that is a regular er verb, you don't change anything about how you conjugate that. Just the same patterns that we've learned in the past. So then you just add the reflexive pronoun between the subject and the verb. So the verb you conjugate like normal, the thing that makes it a reflexive verb is just squeezing that reflexive pronoun in there. So for example, if we have the verb se brosser, which means to brush, and you know that you have to conjugate it for the subject je, following each of these steps, step number one, we choose the reflexive pronoun that matches the subject of the sentence. Our subject here is je, so our reflexive pronoun will be me. Then we conjugate this like we would any other verb, and we can tell that this is an ER verb. It's actually an irreg it is a regular one, sorry. It is a regular ER verb. So what we're going to do is we drop the ER and put an E back, and then we add the reflexive pronoun in. So it'll look like je me pros. So as always, we start with the subject of the sentence. Then we take that reflexive pronoun and put it between the subject and the verb, and we have the verb conjugated like we would for pretty much any other verb. Here are some common reflexive verbs. Reflexive verbs more often than not have to do with your routine for getting yourself ready because those are the actions that you do to yourself. So for example, we have se brosser les cheveux, to brush one's hair, se brosser les dents, brush one's teeth, 
se coiffer, to do one's hair, se coucher, to go to bed, se déshabiller, to undress, s'endormir, to go to sleep or to fall asleep, s'habiller, to get dressed, se laver, which is like to wash oneself, or se laver les mains, to wash one's hands, se lever, these look similar but they're very different, se lever is to get up or to get out of bed, se maquiller, to put on makeup, se raser, to shave, se regarder, to look at oneself, se réveiller, to wake up, and se sécher, to dry. So, big question, are these verbs always reflexive? No, of course not. Nothing's that easy in French. If a verb, even one of these common reflexive verbs, acts on something other than the subject of the sentence, it is not a reflexive verb. So a reflexive verb is only if the action goes back onto the subject, not if the action is being done to something else. So for example, if you say je me réveille, that means I wake myself up. We know that this is reflexive because we have the reflexive pronoun here. In English, we would just say I wake up. We don't really emphasize this reflexive pronoun in English anymore, but what you're really saying is I wake myself up. However, you can say je réveille ma soeur. Same verb, but it's no longer reflexive. We don't put the me here because you are not waking yourself up. You are waking your sister up. So that reflexive pronoun shows that the action is going back toward the subject. If we don't have a reflexive pronoun, we need some sort of other object here. So it would be the same thing if you want to say I brush my hair. Je brosse les cheveux. Je me brosse les cheveux makes it reflexive. But if you want to say, I brush my sister's hair, je brosse les cheveux de ma soeur. And you don't put the reflexive pronoun unless the verb is acting on the subject. Got two last rules. If the body part is the direct object of the reflexive verb, like for example, you're saying that you're washing your hair or brushing your teeth, you use the definite article instead of the possessive article. This is maybe the biggest trick that the French play on us with our reflexive verbs because it is very counterintuitive to what we do in English. In English, we would always say, I brush my teeth or you wash your hands. The idea that the teeth belong to you or the hands belong to you. In French, it's different. You would always use the definite article, which is the. So either le, la, or les. So for example, je me brosse les dents Reflexive pronoun here, but definite article here. Je me brosse les dents means I brush my teeth. Vous vous lavez les mains, you wash your hands. It's not your, it's the, but that's what it means here. Because you have the reflexive pronouns that already signals that the hands belong to you, so they just put the here instead. And sentences with vous or nous in reflexive verbs will look weird because it'll be nu nu or vous vous. It sounds silly, but I mean, that's correct. So if that's how it shows up, that's good. And then our last rule, if a sentence with a reflexive verb has to be negative, this is the order that the words go in. You do subject, and then ne, the reflexive pronoun, verb, and then pa. So we already know that in sentences ne and pa go around the verb, the reflexive pronoun goes with the verb. So it should be in this order. Je ne me regarde pas. So this is an important order to keep in mind for when you have a reflexive verb in a negative sentence. And that's it. That went by pretty fast. But take your notes. Come up with two questions that you want to ask in class tomorrow to clarify. Or if you want to think of more examples to share with your class, that will be helpful as well.